accepting it or not and uh, they have problems also Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Okay, uh, very good answers. Uh, you know, um, communication, um, communication definitely reduces the employee resistance. And uh, you know, even if, uh, for example, among friends also, you you see how uh, friends convince uh, you for uh, some activity, or maybe for example, you're going on a tour, but if you are not going, you have some resistance for a new place. How they convince you? So, communication, education, education in the sense, for example, if you are going on a tour, your friend can help you. see what um, you know different places you can visit so that would be a kind of education regarding that so like your friend just mentioned that uh, um uh, how they can be uh, employees can be informed about uh, what changes are being brought in the organization and why are they uh, are uh, you know taking place so this is education educating them about the uh, change process which is going to happen and communicating is um, how you share full facts with your employees and uh, you clear their misunderstandings and and uh, consequently the resistance is um, expected to be subsided also also communication can help um you know kind of a sell the need for change if if you if if you present the information in the right manner then you can you can convince your employees that there is a need for this change and what benefits would come after implementing so and so changes in the organization so that is why this is this is kind of education and communication and uh, how people are being informed about the change okay also there have been studies which shows that uh, um formal change information uh, sessions where where the change information is formally shared it also decreased employee anxiety about the change the informal communication is good like your friend mentioned but uh, uh, formal communication is also important because it helps re- uh, reducing the employee anxiety about what is coming up and um, high quality information when provided about the change it increases the commitment towards it people feel more committed towards the change okay then comes participation how can participation help overcome resistance to change participation in what sense participation means that you are allowing your employees to participate Uh, ma'am, if people are, are participating, uh, mm-hmm. they they basically are getting involved in a process that actually you know make them change in a very positive sense. For example, if people are given a chance to come up with certain form of ideas as as such, and discussing these ideas with their peers or or even if their seniors are, so they will get involved in this in that process. Or I will I will say that they will become more invested in the change as such. Mm, correct. they will be more interested in the change the other word which we can use it that they would feel as the owner of change they would feel that we are the people who are res- who uh, need to you know uh, carry out change forward successfully they would feel as uh, um people who are responsible for c- carrying out change in a successful manner because participation um would then definitely make them contribute meaningfully they would be able to contribute they would be able to get involved and they would be able to feel more committed and uh, this all reduces resistance to change and increases the quality of change decision the quality of uh, the decision uh, becomes more uh, like becomes stronger and uh, more people are agreeing to it they all feel themselves as a part of change it is not that then that the change has been imposed on that on on them they would feel as a part of the change that they are also uh, among those people who are um, you know participating in bringing the change in the organization so this reduces the negativity and um, 
because they themselves feel as a part of change not that it is imposed on that anymore all right then comes building support and commitment building support and commitment what, what does this mean mam to building support yeah mm -hmm. how can how can support can be provided to employees when they are uh, ma'am uh, uh, ji ma'am like with the advent of technology people uh, have anxiety issues like they will lose their job and such so instead of training uh, building positive relation with them can help mm -hmm. right building mm -hmm. complaint uh, digital systems can also help like if they have any complaint or regarding any culture or something and that should be Address as soon as possible. So that okay. group discussions can also take place so that they can mm -hmm. their problems and worries and be guided through that. Okay. Actively participation can also Ma reduce that. Um, that it also helps okay. in the building support and commitment. Ma'am, okay. it will also help people to get Holding. used to the change by developing new abilities, so they won't be overwhelmed with it. Hmm. So, how this expertise can be developed, or buzz? Ma'am, they can use the data and analytics to understand their employees. Okay, okay. They also they organizing. Mm-hmm. Ji. Ma'am, organizing tutorials and workshops. Hmm. Right. Very good point, Nidal. Organizing this training and the tutorials, workshops. uh through this uh they can be helped in learning new skills for example if the if the if the upcoming change requires new skills then they could be supported the employees could be supported in such a way that they acquire those new skills uh through training through uh you know tutorials through workshops so that they if they feel comfortable that okay we would be able to perform the task or we would be able to Uh, embrace change see uh, when when employees fear and uh, they are anxious and when this anxiety and fear is are high then also another aspect uh, is there in uh, which uh, helps in supporting the employees which is kind of counseling they can be counseled a therapy can be given to them they can be talked to that why do you think this change would be not good for you and maybe they have some misunderstanding some misconceptions about the change which could be addressed through counseling through a kind of a, uh i won't say that as an informal communication but that is kind of a, a different process where experts counsel um employees and give them a sort of therapy because of which they they understand that okay maybe they are thinking too much maybe they are um, feeling a, a lot of anxiety because maybe out of uh, because of nothing because they have apprehensions and those can be addressed through counseling and therapy okay and uh, of course training tutorials workshops can help also they can be supported if um uh, if 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 they want to be home for a week for 2 uh, 3 days they could be given a short paid leave also for uh, uh, to facilitate this adjustment they can also feel better that way and uh, um ma'am yes ma'am i want to add one point that uh, yes. employee employees can be provided support by the organizations like uh, by fulfilling their basic needs mm -hmm. uh, in basic needs like safety security and flexibility in the work we can see in the covid era like uh, people are provided uh, they are supported by uh, by allowing them working from the home mm -hmm. so it's uh, all supportive that is what yes you are right and it also helps them feel uh, committed emotionally they feel more committed when counseling is done when they are giving training then they feel committed emotionally they get attached to to the um, change um, change uh, which is being uh, introduced in the organization and they feel 
as, like all these are interconnected they feel that is a part of change they feel emotionally connected to the change okay mm-hmm. then comes develop positive relationships um see positive relationships again those can be developed uh through um um through um helping them develop their uh, the uh, support to the employees the positive relationships are to be developed among the employees and the managers so that they um, are able to uh, you know trust the their, their managers also so um, this is can, um, can i add a point to yes, this yes sir please Uh, ma'am, uh, I I think a good example of positive relationship was given by Vipro when they uh, uh, give give free vaccine to their employees on priority basis. Right. I think that's a good example. Right, and this is how they can create a good work environment, which uh, which you know uh, supports the employees. A kind of, this is this uh, develop relationships. Uh, positive relationship is more connected to uh, develop. positive work environment where uh, uh, the mergers for example if mergers are hap- if, for example if merger is taking place and uh, those who had a more uh, in a merger if if somebody have more positive relationship with their supervisor and uh, maybe if uh, if they felt that uh, they are in a work environment which is supported uh, in which they are supported so they can find themselves more positive about the change they would feel more positive about the change and they would and they would come up with better performance more constructive behavior will come up okay zainab this is a good point also developing positive relationships through celebrating differences giving constructive feedback and enabling effective communication because then uh, the people would feel themselves closer to their bosses as well and they would feel again themselves as a part of the change okay the sec- the uh, next point through which they can overcome resistance to change is implement changes fairly implement changes fairly like the name suggests um uh, to minimize the negative impact of change it is important that change is implemented fairly that uh, for example what procedures are uh, being taken f- uh, for uh, uh, to implement change they are shared with with the employees and uh, so that the employees uh, may know what steps have been taken what uh, uh, procedures have been followed because uh, employees perception is very important it should not turn negative they should be positive about the change that that the administration is following a fair procedure as well to implement change and then they would feel more uh, uh, again they would feel more attached to the change and they would be able to trust the administration their supervisors and the change uh, upcoming change better any point anybody would like to add ma'am is this about uh, setting uh, proper goals and uh, celebrating the goals which are achieved uh goals goals basically comes when we are informing them about what the change is it is more about what steps they are taking to implement the changes for example uh, you know uh, the procedures the finance part or maybe the um, act, the complete uh, layout of change it is more technical part in which they need okay. maybe financial aspect also so all this they may also share with the employees the procedural uh, aspect right the goals are actually the outcomes because of, about which we are educating the employees we are uh, trying to you know uh, give them counseling and therapy so those are the outcomes but implementation is the more connected to the uh, whole process which is followed to implement the change okay kanishka okay. acha Yes. then comes manipulation and cooperation see manipulation uh, refers to again how we how we present our information how we twist our uh, facts in such a way that they become more um, attractive to the listener to the uh, employees so 
so how we twist the facts that they become more attractive and which information we have to share with in which information we may not have to share because all if if all the points are being shared then maybe it is uh, something that the employees may find a uh, few points unfavorable so so to realize yes who is this ma'am um, how yes. manipulation and hiding facts are ethical yes it is not ethical but in manipulation what they are doing they are um, for example if they have a uh, 10 things to tell their employees they are maybe sharing only 5 just just so that their uh, employees may you know agree to the change it may not be ethical because they are hiding the facts you are right and it may and it may also you know contradict this uh, fair implementation but then again how to you know how to convince their employees sometimes it happens with us also in daily lives we share uh, for example um, for example again if you are going on a tour we share with our parents uh, which is all the favorable points we may not tell them some unfavorable points because of which maybe they would not let us go so this is what manipulation is that they are sharing the points they are sharing the information which the employees will find attractive and not those uh, which may threaten the uh, employee and co- cause more resistance right so this is manipulation and also you know when they, when they would be sharing too much of the information and not withholding some of the information it may also create rumors so uh, manipulation here means that they share what is required not everything okay so this is one of the way in which they try to convince their employees they try to gain their confidence and their support all right and cooperation cooperation you know cooperation is a combination of adding one more of people the group uh, who are on your side and one most uh Uh, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. see cooperation is a, a combination of manipulation and participation what happens like uh, i think you are trying to say this uh, i agree to it uh, although i did not hear all the words what happens that uh, when there is a group we try to we try to involve some of the uh, people not to f- not to take their advice or not to make them uh, you know find a better solution but just to to get their endorsement just to uh, make them realize that okay your your um, participation is also important and you uh, we also need you by our side although they may not t- uh, seek their advice uh, or uh, look for a solution from them but just to please them they in, they in, include them in the team so this is what uh, cooperation is is this what you were trying to say aditya okay so this is another um, uh, way to uh, help people overcome resistance to change because then they uh, are part of the um, change process they are part of the team and uh, just for the sake of uh, the fact that they may feel themselves as part of the team and feel more pleased they are included in the team this um, is convert cool. influence attempts so i am mm-hmm. um, um, uh, it's just uh, i'm just some sometimes destroying facts uh, make them more uh, attractive Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. to manipulation destroying facts uh, i i i would say hiding facts because uh, okay. then no? yes ma'am twisting facts they are they, they are saying It's twisting facts yes they are saying things in such a way that they, it it becomes more attractive to the listener you know yes ma'am okay, okay. this is what happens this is how sales person are they try to you know uh, tell so many good things about the product so that we are uh, you know we 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 buy the product they may not be uh, sharing um, other aspects right 
ट्रांसपेरेंसी who are uh, able to um face the changes who are are flexible who are uh, have more positive attitudes towards change than other people um such individuals they are open to you know to experience and uh, to try new things and they are willing to take risk they are flexible in their behavior so this needs to be seen that they may select people who accept change so that when change is introduced in the organization they don't face a lot of resistance to change from the their employees g and what is significant for either the processes or procedures or operations or the locations in changing uh, what uh, changing in what perspective okay in every perspective in any perspective the procedures could be changed see the working methods could be changed the mergers could happen if mergers happen then the new company which is coming up um, the rules and regulations are of that company some sometimes people sometimes organize organizations take over other company so in that also you know they are uh, following then their rules and their regulations and there are changes in or uh, the complete work environment so in the procedures definitely in the work methods in the way the tasks are being executed that is why training is given that is why counseling is given so that people feel comfortable in uh, performing those those tasks right okay ma'am got it okay. so okay also the, it is needed to be seen that people who are uh, you know hired they have a higher men, higher um, mental ability because that helps them learn and adapt to change more easily in their workplace so this is also an important aspect to select people who accept change readily who are ready to accept change who are flexible who are more uh, risk taking people so uh, that is how uh, people can be helped to, to overcome the resistance to change okay um then means comes coercion coercion what does this means using force, force using force to implement something mm -hmm. where uh, yes where force is used on the people who are resisting change and also direct threats are given to those people and this is the last technique coercion because uh, if so, if anything doesn't work this is what they would be following or maybe uh, this this um some people are not very much in uh, organizations not interested in you know giving the support or training so maybe they would follow this in the beginning so if management really is uh, you know um determined to implement the change and if any how the employees are not agreeing to it they they then face uh, then they uh, kind of uh, impose uh, the change uh, forcefully through this direct threats or force on the resistors so this is similar to theory of x forcing ha hmm. to, to do exactly. the work right rafid so correct now quickly we can see a model of uh, change this is uh, one model which uh, is uh, included in your syllabus under the organizational change how we manage organizational change it is uh, lewin's three step model and kurt lewin k u r t kurt lewin um has uh, proposed this uh, model who argues that uh, successful change in organizations should follow these three steps unfreezing movement and refreezing 
So he argues that any change, any successful change in organization should follow these three steps. Now, what is happening here that the status quo is an is an equilibrium state. You see the status quo, like uh, the name suggests, it is an equilibrium state. Then there is a desired state. Okay. Now, uh, from top, the forces which are coming are the restraining forces, and the forces which are coming from downwards are the driving forces. Now, to move from the equilibrium, to move from the status quo, um, is to overcome the pressure of uh, both the individual resistance and also if there is any group conformity. So only if they, they are able to overcome the pressure of the group conformity or individual resistance, then only they would be able to move from the status quo, from the equilibrium state. Now the driving forces which are coming from downward, um, they, 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 uh, these direct forces are forces which show the direct behavior away from the status quo. That would bring the status quo a little upward if these forces are stronger. And from the top, the arrows which are coming are the restraining forces which hinder the movement away from equilibrium. And what we need to do is we need to decrease these restraining forces which are coming from upwards and we need to increase the driving forces which are coming from the uh, from below. So once the um, the restraining forces are decreased So once the, the restraining forces are decreased and the driving forces are increased, then they reach to a new equilibrium, a new uh, status quo is achieved. And the third approach could be that these two forces can be combined. These two uh, approaches can be combined. Now companies that uh, have been successful they are likely to encounter the restraining forces which are coming from the top because people question the need for change. They question that why there is the, why this change is happening. So these are the restraining forces. So by addressing them, by uh, counseling them, by giving them therapy, by communicating, these restraining forces can be uh, decreased and that will increase the a pressure of the driving forces and then um, the status quo will be more towards the desired state. So this is how um, a new equilibrium can be achieved and then there is a need for refreezing. There is a need that uh, the new situation must be refrozen so that it can be sustained over time. Sometimes it has not happened and because of which there remains uh, uh, apprehensions, there, uh, there remains uh, uh, a very short life of this new change. But when a new status quo, new equilibrium is achieved, it is important that it must be refrozen and um, sustained over time. Without this last step of refreezing, the employees will uh, employees will attempt to come back to the previous situation because they are used to that. So they would, uh, they might come back to the previous equilibrium state if they are not, uh, uh, if the new state is not, if in the new status quo they are not supported, if the communication is not happening, if they are not uh, um, counseled, trainings are not given, then they are tend to come back to their previous status quo and uh, that change would not be long lasting okay so to make the change long lasting it is important to make sure that a new equilibrium is sustained over time and steps are taken so that people feel uh, are, people get used to to the new equilibrium state is that uh, clear anything you want to add 
So with this, we come uh, to the end of uh, organizational change. Uh, we discuss organizational change. We discuss the forces for change, the resistance, why people resist change, the individual sources and the organizational sources. Then we discussed the uh, factors, um, steps, how people can overcome resistance to change. And this is the Lewin's three-step model. Is there any confusion in this model? Anything you want to add? Anything you want to ask? All clear? Lalit? Yes, ma'am. Anishka? I'm clear. Yes, ma'am, it's clear. It's simple. All right. So this is the this is what we had to discuss in the organizational change part. So uh, now, uh, Fiza ma'am, shall start a new topic today, uh, which is stress. Organization is stress. So just uh, please wait for five minutes. She must be logging in. I have, I have something to say. I'm actually, uh, I wanted to add a point uh -huh. that uh, we know that in any organization, uh, achieving a goal is really important for the employer as well as the employees. And to for the achievement of that goal, the participation of the employees is very uh, critical and necessary. Mm -hmm. And uh, sometimes the bosses or the employer become so bossy in their attitude that they forgot that how the employee would be thinking at the at that point of time and uh, and rather being a uh, bossy uh, the employee could be become empathetic in that situation then it would also help the employee uh, to be more productive uh, and and to be more uh, less lesser in the resistance to change hmm. uh, you you are right you are right and that is why this uh, aspect is there which uh, which is like counseling and which is uh, therapy they need to understand their employer they need to uh, understand what their issues are why are they so apprehensive about the change they need to discuss them they need to solve their issues you know, in counseling, what happens? They, uh, the 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 employee is able to share his feelings. Maybe he is not able to do that uh, other way. In counseling, he is able to. So that is what uh, maybe counseling therapy that helps, and also the empathy that you mentioned. That's a very good point. The uh, the the management should understand how what, what employees shall go through what issues they would face and accordingly accordingly uh, um, measures should be taken so that those uh, issues maybe uh, like they can uh, address those issues some some points are understandable that okay the employee shall face so and so issues so there should be techniques, there should be steps to address those issues. Or if there is a personal issue, hai, that could be addressed through counseling. Because maybe the person is... Uh, uh, change can also happen if the person is giving, uh, given a transfer. Then also the issues can come up. Right? So counseling is yes, important. Right. Okay. Okay, please wait for five minutes. I think two minutes, just let me check.
Okay, Fiza ma'am is joining. Uh, no, I'm I'm already there, Zareen. Only thing is that uh, uh, internet uh, connectivity oh, is uh, okay. an issue with me today. Uh, so I think uh, you've covered change. Yes, ma'am. We finished change. I, I'm sure uh, that issue uh, has been adequately addressed, and students have participated and. Um, taken care of the, the issues related to change. Mm -hmm. uh, so I think uh, we'll not start with any new topic today. Uh, I hope students have read uh, the the article that we had shared some time back and we had informed that we'll be discussing it sometime. Uh, can we take up that article for discussion today? There was this uh, mm -hmm. McKinsey. All right. There was this report uh, by McKinsey. Not exactly a report, but uh, an article which was based on McKinsey's research. Uh, have Have you read this article? Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma yes, ma can we take up that article because we we can just uh, discuss the key issues and close, and then maybe the next uh, topic we'll take it up in the class uh, next time, right? Uh, so, uh, what are the, the the key aspects which uh, the article talks about? Sharim, could you point out one uh, one major aspect that the article uh, focuses on? Um, can I add a point? Sakib, right? Yes, ma'am. Ma'am, uh, the article basically talks talks about the uh, changes which are happening due to COVID and uh, and uh, in future if anything something like COVID happens. So how do the management deals with that and how do the management uh, cooperate with their employees and create an uh, environment of social harmony and uh, give a specific uh, task and uh, capacity building programs. I think that's basically what it is. I think the uh, Corona effect would have changed many aspects of our lives ranging from healthcare to social norms. And this article talks about that unprecedented action has been taken uh, and it hampers many things, pandemic like to shutdowns of schools offices, and uh, many managers have to take unprecedented action and uh, but that should not mean that it should hamper our work routine. Manager have uh, taken a good step, many good steps and due to advancement in the technology, we have enough resources to continue the work routine without going but and it also gave the glimpses of uh, how virtual wo world look like could you add some point ma'am can i okay just a second uh, okay abdul ahad yes ma'am ma'am this article is based on the employer response organization response uh, uh, in the in the second wave of the covid 19 how to retain the employee and how to motivate them uh, how to retain the employee in an organization in this article the in this article it is tell about it about what are the steps taken by the organization to retain the employee like they uh, most of the organization most like banks make the covid uh, covid fund covid fund which is depends on uh, which it, it is it is for uh, providing them vaccine and if they got uh, if they got infected by the virus so uh, they get they get all the necessary things available to them and all the other things may i add some point yes vakas vakas Ma'am, it is based on the survey, uh, so which is uh, also talks. Of, uh, which first of all, it tells that uh, the uh, employees are uh, pretty much uh, like sure, are uh, have given the good response that their uh, uh, basic need has been taken. But then it goes on to tell that uh, it since the plan, uh, return phase is going on, so there are three key steps that the leadership or the organization need to take. First uh, step is to build on the trust that uh, since the trust has been built up, so they, uh, the uh, organization should try to build it on uh, by giving the four step which is the credibility feasibility sustainability and customization then it talks all talks about then the organization should go beyond uh, like uh, taking care of just the basic need 
which is a relationship cohesion and social security and at last it uh, tells out that uh, the tv should, uh, that options need to uh, use like uh, the advanced tech uh, to uh, create an, a tailored approach and uh, at last it tells about that the employees need to uh, be given a compelling or more uh, like a sense of purpose of uh, sense of purpose uh, so that they can navigate through the uncertainty and the change okay uh, kanishka you were saying something Uh, yeah, yeah. The process covered almost all the points. So basically, it is telling how organization can build a positive environment, uh, and also uh, keep in uh, point that what are the needs of the employees and how they can cover it uh, from the usual needs and as well as the mental needs because they are going through a lot. Okay. And for uh, this, we have given many points that how you can improve it, and there right. are surveys how people are thinking about the organization. Okay. could you find any uh, parallels between uh, what is there in this article and what has been discussed today in the in this uh, concept of change is there are there any parallels that you can draw yes, yes ma'am ma we talked about uh ma'am we talked about how the workforce can be more effective ma'am here we talk about the potential actions which we can take to ensure a positive culture for example we can uh, have a create a network of teams by having a cross functional so that we can increase the strength of the organization along with the solving the problems more effectively we can also uh, um, uh, have a cultivate psychological safety by giving um, by allowing individual employees to put forward their views and this so that they can also experiment with new things without uh, having a fear of negative consequences okay okay somebody else was uh, picking in i think arbaz nidal okay ha huh. as we can as we know that the whole dynamics of organization has shifted from work at office to work from home so uh, the the change the, the we have things we have discussed in the lecture is how to adapt to changes and how to sustain those changes and how to uh, make how to make people uh, adapt to change these changes very easily Uh, so uh, but but my question remains a little unanswered ma'am uh, lalit ma yes ma'am ma ma in today's class uh, we have discussed about the uh, how to overcome the resistance to change in this we have discussed two points cooperation and positive relationship this is this article also is related to that like building trust listen to your workforce and uh, like focus on workforce effectivity and well-being and other point is also given in this article like continue to continue to meet the basic needs of the employees like safety security and create culture to connect people at the vast level uh who else ma'am may I? yes what can i no okay ma'am uh, actually okay okay ma'am vakas you spoke already right yes ma'am just a second arbaz yes ma'am mainly today we talked about the organizational changes so we can relate this article to that in that way because uh, in this article we talked about a change that happened due to covid so the same thing the the thing we talked about in class was same that how can we adapt to changes uh, when something new happens so in this article we talked about uh, building on positive relations uh, relationships and building trust so the same okay. thing uh, same thing can be related to the thing we talked in class Okay. like how we can overcome the changes what is this uh, social capital that the article talks about can somebody explain and basically social capital uh, means um, when building the bond between the uh, employees and the employers of an organization when creating a network uh, and building uh, and also encourage individually and experiment without fear of negative consequences Um, yes. Okay. Ah, uh, yes. Now well, it is basically building a particular network in the organization to have a better understanding between the persons of the organization, which live together and work together, and then bring the society to function. Yes. Where are you? There's too much of background noise. Uh, hello. Yeah. I'm audible now. You know, you are less audible, but there's a lot of noise from the background. Uh, now I am audible. Okay. Okay. 
Yes, speak. Uh, yes. Ma'am, oh. basically these are uh, these are the shared norms, values that facilitates cooperation in the in the organization. The, the social capital. All right. Just like we have always emphasized, corporates have always emphasized on physical capital. Uh, especially, you know, American corporates have emphasized on physical capital and infrastructure and maybe products, technology, uh, plant equipments, machines. But off late, um, corporates have uh, come to realize that social capital is, you know, something which needs to be valued and which is probably more important than physical capital. Social capital is uh, all the relationships, all the you know, the, somebody said bond. So the bonds that, which exist at the workplace between workers, between employees, employer, everybody, that is what social capital is. And that is uh, capital which is much more important uh, than physical capital. So the, the article talks about the importance of social capital, building trust, building relationships, and then building your organization on those uh, relationships and, and trust. Uh, so that is what has become even more important even uh, during these COVID times because uh, organizations have suffered a major setback. Uh, everybody has suffered, uh, you know, setbacks in some ways. Uh, corporates uh, could not, uh, you know, they were finding it difficult to survive uh, because of lockdowns and because of the, the, the way businesses were uh, hit uh, due to the pandemic. So then during those times, it was uh, realized by companies that probably social capital is the most important thing that, you know, that we need to really value relationships, trust people's commitment, people's uh, belief in the organization. Those became uh, fairly, very important concepts uh, during this last one year. Uh, there is also something related, uh, talk, uh, mentioned about purpose in this article. What is this purpose? Ma'am, it talks about connecting people Ma with something bigger than themselves. If people will realize that they are uh, yeah. co cooperating with the uh, with the people around them and they're helping in the even in this pandemic phase, they'll know that their purpose yeah. is bigger yeah. than them. Okay, can I add my forms? That people need to realize there's something bigger. Realize that there's something bigger than your than you. Something bigger than me. And what is that? The the, the Ma'am, basically, we uh, basically, ma'am, bring purpose to their life by sharing their story start a longer conversation with the with the people to to make them realize this thing okay, that they are not alone in this situation and i'm also telling them that there is a highest uh, value uh, which we for which we are doing all these things so they, they will realize that there is a purpose which is very important what they are doing yeah so so basically um, can i add, add a point something here bigger, something think of something bigger than yourself what does that mean sakib Yes, ma'am. Uh, ma'am, that's basically uh, talks about integrating our uh, our work with a, a value higher than uh, what we are doing. Like, ma'am, uh, doctors uh, or the paramedic staffs in this COVID situation was uh, given us a feel or sense by their leaders that they are doing it for something very uh, bigger than themselves. So they were like motivated to really put their uh, life on the paddle and uh, to achieve something that uh, to stop a, a catastrophe like covid in these times and when uh, like uh, the people who develop covid vaccine they are also thinking in terms of that they are go uh, doing this work not only for uh, research and sciences but for uh, achieving something uh, bigger than uh, what usually people do so All right. uh, okay okay good uh, Sakip. Then there's uh, something related to the initial part of the article talks about employees, how they felt, uh, you know, after this change, uh, remote working and some people were not working remotely. They were working on site. Some were working off site. What were the experiences uh, in terms of uh, their overall uh, uh, satisfaction? There's something related to that in the beginning of the article. Can somebody touch upon that? Yes. Uh, yes, yes ma'am. Ma Fathers have a far more positive effect of this pandemic. They, they tend to spend more time with their loved ones and with their family. Uh, they have more positive in impact of this. Okay, over. Uh, yes, ma'am. Ma those who, who are working remotely are able to perform better than the one who are not working remotely. Those who are isolated are not able to perform very well in comparison to those who are around their loved ones, families and uh, fathers are better than mothers in terms of working remotely 
it is mentioned in the article in the beginning ma'am it is also mentioned that the people um it is also mentioned that people who are working remotely and uh, they live with their dependents uh, have more benefits than the people who are working remotely without dependents ma'am people who Basically, are working remotely see Rasheed. more positive effects on their mm-hmm. daily work and are more engaged and have a stronger sense of well-being than those in non-remote jobs with right. a little flexibility all right unaza you were saying something ma'am maskan has already made that point okay okay somebody else was saying something yes ma'am basically those who have a family to take care of they were more engaged while working remotely and those who are in their bachelorhood were feeling more boredom at the work, at at working at in the workplace so uh, article is based on a survey of us uh, employees do you think the experiences which are shared uh, they apply to indian employees also or they had a different experience yes ma'am it's completely apply here here as No ma'am. Ma'am, my opinion differs yes, from Mossif. Ma'am, my opinion differs as uh, in, in Indian culture it was not properly implemented though they were actually saying that you can work from home but they were actually uh, harnessing the uh, manpower they were actually they were not actually doing the right as uh, uh, so many people were just giving uh, Uh, so many hours like uh, they were giving more than 12 to 14 hours so it was actually not implemented uh, properly like uh, in the countries like us or in de- developed countries it, it has implemented what was the problem the problem was ma'am actually that uh, the, the due to the flexible hours that we have not actually adopted earlier uh, the in the name of flexible hours we, we we have given a lot of time a huge time actually uh, they were not able to i think meet with their family and they were too much stressed and they were not uh, able to give the time to their family or whoever, whoever in their family members okay uh, ma'am anyone else would like to kanishka uh, yes ma'am so ma'am in work from home also uh, like in other countries like uk us there it is a timing like from 9 to 5 if there is job they will stop the work at 5 but in india from work from home uh, people are asking them to do uh, the task at different different hours so it is not helping that much they have to do more tasks so they are, they are not that happy about this and may i comment ha vakas Man, actually, the India is a high country society uh, as compared to the US, which is a low country society. So it is, has a like, uh, severe impact on this. Like, since we are more socially interconnected, so it has uh, like uh, the impact was not uh, that great uh, for us in terms of like work from home experience. Okay, Varis. डूरिंग दिस पैंडेमिक सो दो and earning money during this time period uh, they they were they were also uh, feeling stressed but they are also uh, thankful for that so what has been the experience now after one year what has been the experience with work from home compared to what we experienced in the beginning Ma'am, it was not uh, that much good because um, uh, there is a limit uh, in uh, uh, um work from home there is no limit uh, as uh, compared to uh, all working days like it was from 9 to 5 uh, or 9 to 10 like uh, likewise this uh, was there but <clears throat> the condition is nowadays are they are giving stress to the person they are giving workload to them uh, like uh, people are not uh, dead because of covid they are uh, uh, get that be, uh, because of uh, heart attacks be, uh, these are the conditions nowadays so there is a stress there is a lot of okay. stress over here okay what is the uh, my question was what is the uh, the experience of corporates as far as as far as work from home is concerned now uh, what is their stand they want to continue with this 
Uh, ma'am. No, ma'am. No, ma'am. Adib. Ah, uh, ma'am. We can see that uh, for new employees who have just graduated or who have just graduated their master and looking for new jobs. So for them, uh, it's uh, always been work from home. So they have not gotten, they have not been in the exposure of a uh, corporate world or the, how professional they have to be. They are just sitting in their rooms and on their bed working from home. And while they, if they have been in the office, uh, post COVID, so they would have uh, professionally. attended meetings and that uh, that gives us a interaction for for everyone which is very important for in the corporate world physical interaction okay last year same time tcs announced and it was everywhere uh, you know in newspapers that they will have 75% employees working from home uh one year hence tcs has now announced that they are calling everybody back what is this Ma'am, because work from home did not work out properly, that's why they are. No, no, no work was done efficiently, ma'am. That is why they are. What's the reason? Ma'am, right now I think uh, the, the people who are working from home are good. like more comfortable. The people who are working in MNCs, they have like a better working condition in the situation of the work from home. Because I have observed my sister, she was also doing the work from home, and I didn't observe anything like that. Cause she is giving extra work, and she is working so like for like more hours. Like, uh, like your sister, you are saying my one of my cousin also is working in Delhi, and uh, she states that uh, if uh, I was in the office, so I was having particular hours that uh, at this time I can leave my. But uh, now it's work from home, so every client is asking us uh, to work late uh, because. they just uh, mentioned that you are working from home what's the issue you can do the work late so in some corporate see, world there is an issue yeah or even yes, i even got your point see i i gave the example of tcs because tcs is supposed to be one of the you know most uh, those kind of organizations that we look up to uh, uh, a benchmark uh, so tcs said that 75% people will work from home and now it says that you know we want people back we want them to come back so that is what my question was it why why is it why is there a change in stance in what tcs had said earlier and what it is saying now what happened ma'am because basically the junior workers are not working that properly as i am seeing in my family too that uh, my sister has to take up so many loads because her juniors are not doing work so uh, it will not work effectively if they are from work from home doing work from home So is this entire concept of virtual working and remote working has it turned out to be a failure what happened Asif ma'am actually what i believe that uh, lack of coordination is there that the reporting is not uh, properly done like uh, the subordinates are not uh, properly reporting to the, their seniors and the juniors are not uh, reporting to their seniors so there is the lack of coordination here Ma'am, we need to make employee engagement uh, in order uh, and uh, work with the tailored approach, uh, so as to reap all the benefits of work from home. Ma'am, uh, I would say it's not a failure as. Yes, Aram. The it, it wasn't very efficient, is what I can say, but it was definitely not a failure. As it it was getting the job jobs done. Uh, There were uh, certain yeah. barriers. Okay. Uh, like lack of permission, but okay. What has been the experience of work from home for Indian companies, and then maybe companies in the let's say America? Uh, are the experiences different? Ma'am, in uh, US, the people were professional and uh, followed the corporate guidelines, but uh, in India, it is uh, like more of a desi way. They don't. Uh, You know, like, when this somebody so talked about uh, too much of workload and people working for continuous hours from home and becoming stressed, somebody raised this issue. Uh, there was also this uh, discussion on the right to disconnect. It takes us there also. Are you aware of what is this uh, demand for the right to disconnect? Employees across the world were demanding a right to disconnect. Are you aware of what it what it is? They they are working sometimes at which they don't have to work. Actually, usually, so we are on a fixed time. But when one of them started, they no fixed timing. They they were assigned job and used to complete. They were working hours of fixed. 
So that was the. So what is this right to disconnect? Then we can say that it was not followed in India that much. Because no, uh, as I told I'm you that getting, about UK, you're not uh, probably answering what I'm asking. Ma'am, right to disconnect is like no uh, email messages or anything during non-working hours. Ma'am. So is, can that be implemented? Ma'am, it should be implemented. Then only work from home will uh, work properly. But it is not implementing in India. Is it implemented anywhere else? Ma'am, in UK, uh, people were implementing this thing. At least Spain and Belgium, it's implemented. Are you sure? Ma'am, it's in the ma'am. Ah, uh, they have proposed it to the human right. Ah, uh, but they have. मतलब ma'am, it's in the proposal phase, ma'am. Okay. Ah, uh, anyone wants to say further to what we have already discussed? Anything else? Of course, subsequent to this discussion, I'll be sharing a few articles. One again, simple ones on what we have discussed, so that you know you get to know what exactly is uh, the scenario now and uh, what is happening now. So one or two more articles for you to read. Simple, small articles. Just read them because books uh, and what we discuss in, discuss in class theories they are one aspect, but you need to know what exactly is the reality, the the practical world, what is happening, and how the theory applies to the real life. So for that, that is why we share these articles. You know, for example, you studied uh, change management today. You studied about that UN's model. It's an old model, but if you see it, it is so relevant because even today companies apply that uh, thinking and they apply the same process of bringing about change using change agents, using change champions, and bringing about the change and uh, freezing it and so on. So that's how uh, actually things uh, are done in the real, uh, real world also. So application of theory has to be understood. That is why we discuss these articles. Uh, so, anyone wants to say anything else to related to what we have discussed? Otherwise, we can uh, close for today. I'll yes, share. Ma'am. Ah, Sakib. Ma'am, uh, ma'am, I was like thinking. Um, you posed that uh, why did the TCS did not work out the uh, uh, work from home? Uh, so, ma'am, I think there are uh, basically two reasons. I think uh, first is that ma'am, the organizational structure was. Uh, was uh, in such a way that it was uh, uh, on the field jobs basically so when this pandemic come came man the uh, the thing which they could have faced was like there was not proper software and hardware uh, system uh, and uh, the proper uh, tra training and management of uh, things that how should we go about uh, 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 reporting and collecting uh, and uh, 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 giving the authority and uh, who's uh, who's uh, who is going to take the responsibility if something does not work out. And these things, right. I think, was not uh, uh, were not properly. Uh, right, right. See, we were uh, not uh, probably prepared for uh, any of those things. Um, in in US, work from home was not a new concept. Companies had already been, you know, implementing. Uh, they had implemented this concept long time back. People were working remotely. Uh, a lot of employees were working from home already, bef even before the pandemic happened. Telecommuting, teleworking. These were common concepts uh, in the Western uh, countries. But of course, in India, these were not uh, very common. Very. Uh, popular and and so therefore when the pandemic uh, took place we were not really prepared for uh, this kind of an eventuality and suddenly when you know you started working home uh, there were a lot of barriers there were a lot of problems infrastructural problems uh, uh, several issues that actually uh, kind of uh, uh, created those kinds of in inefficiencies that we now see because of which companies are saying that probably it's not working well and we want people back uh, so they were not ready for this Kind of a situation, this kind of a culture, this new work uh, paradigm, and that is why problems started to happen. Now, there is a mixed response. Some companies are saying they will continue with work from home. Some are saying they might not. We still have to wait for some time and see because the pandemic has still not cleared. We we don't know. Uh, we we just hope that you know things become better, and uh, but we still don't know how things will shape up. So this is still in the lurch. What will happen? And remote workers will they come back or not? Uh, but there's there's still a lot. To be, you know, we we need to just wait and watch and see how things will shape up. You know, there was there's something very interesting last year when uh, to share a personal experience last year when we were um, having PhD candidates on board. Uh, we have an IMA 
program and then we have a regular phd program so when we were taking phd candidates on board everybody wanted to work on work from home employees you know how they are uh, what kind of situations they are facing and their job satisfaction and their commitment and so on and so forth and i told my research scholars the, the new ones that you know this is probably an ephemeral uh, phenomenon you don't know what will happen after one year and that is what has happened now those research scholars they have come back and they say that oh we took this topic work from home and we thought we'll work on tcs on those companies and the concept is nearing its end in one year it appears to be nearing its end and the phd is a minimum 3 year process so you know the, the that is what happens you know we sometimes we probably feel that this is something which is happening now it is going to stay and then uh, within one year we have realized probably it's not going to stay so that's what the point is that we have seen mixed responses as far as work from home is concerned uh, some companies have successfully implemented it some have not been able to do it it's a lot of cultural issue uh, it's not just infrastructural or it issue it's a lot of hr issue actually cultural issue and those companies which have not been able to handle uh, this remote work as a culture aspect uh, have probably realized that we need to call back people uh, so anyway we we need to see we need to wait and see how things will shape up uh, so fine okay ma'am i think g6 countries can uh, implement this because those countries are uh, ahead of india no it's not that it's not that See, there have been even in the West. It, as I said, it's an old concept. It's nothing new for them. But even there, there have been success stories and failure stories. So it, de it depends on the sector also. It depends on the industry also. In fact, this these arrangements were more common in the IT sector. But uh, of course, in lot of cases, even IT companies have not uh, uh, been very effective in implementing it. Uh, so there have been, as I said, mixed responses everywhere. Uh, okay. Uh, so anyway, we'll continue maybe with these with this discussion again in the next class if we have some new thoughts and new perspectives. Let's close. Zareen, Zareen, ma'am is there? Yes, ma'am, I'm Zareen, here. You want to please add to something, please? please. Uh, I think all the points have been already covered, ma'am, about the article almost. Should we close then? Okay, ma'am, sure. Okay. I had to share one case with you. I'm somehow not able to uh, trace that case, so I'll do it. And probably if, if I'm able to share, we can discuss it on Friday or maybe Saturday. Otherwise, we'll take up the next uh, topic. Okay. All right. Thank you, ma'am. Okay.